of Kenneth Randall, M.D. Kenneth Randall is more than a mere character of fiction. He is the personification of the spirit, the ideals, the disappointments, the sacrifices, the struggles, and the hopes of literally hundreds of physicians who throughout the years saw, and what's more, did something about the needs for advancement in industrial medicine. Dr. Kenneth Randall, you're a very wonderful man. Mm, that's right. And come to think of it, you're a very, uh, well, to say the least, a very brave young woman, Mrs. Randall. Brave? Why do you say that? Why? Because you married me. <laughs> oh, but don't misunderstand. Actually, you have a wonderful catch in me. A brilliant young surgeon, fresh from an exciting career as an underpaid intern. <laughs> but ready now to conquer the medical world and lay it at your feet. Ah, yes, I can see it all now. A huge banquet. All the prominent medical men in the country gathered to pay honor and tribute to Dr. Kenneth W. Randall. World renowned. Famous for his great contributions to, uh, to, uh, uh, well, something or other. Of course, you'll be there too with my proud little wife. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. Mm -hmm. Ah, I can hear me now. As I stand to accept the tremendous ovation and make my acceptance speech. All that I am, or ever hope to be, I owe to my little wife. Bravo! Bravo! <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, Ken, if you're such a wonderful catch, why am I so brave to marry you? Because you didn't wait until I became a success. You married me now. Before I even have an office of my own. I should call sharing one with Dad an office. Before I even had my first regular patient. Hurry. <laughs> 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 
Is it a patient? Hello. Uh, there's, there's nobody there. No wonder there's no one there. That's the doorbell ringing. Here's your robe. Oh, thank you, dear. Gotta get there. Quick, Doc. Bulls hurt bad. Bleeding like anything. I'll be back in a minute. Darling, it was a patient. One of the workmen was hurt over at the mill. Oh, I'll get your clothes. We can get there quicker if we cut across. We'll take that car. Yeah. Disinfect. Sure, that's what we always do. Cobwebs for the bleeding and chewing tobacco for disinfect. Here, let me in there. Yes, sir. We have to get this man to a hospital quickly. Easy. Take it easy. Chart. Has my son come in yet, Miss Lane? No, he hasn't, Dr. Randall. Oh, here he is now. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Miss Lane. Good morning. Say, Ken, I uh, looked in on that new patient of yours just now. A fellow from the mill. I hope you don't mind. Gosh, no, Dad. What'd you think about him? Looks like he'll be all right. Husky fellow, you did a fine job. Splendid piece of surgery. <laughs> well, like father, like son, I hope, Dad. That'll take years of hard work. By the way, you'd better accustom yourself to addressing me as doctor, especially around the hospital. I'll do the same. Very well, Dad. Uh, doctor. Excuse me, Dr. Monroe left this for you to look at before you leave. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, I've been thinking. They have quite a number of accidents over there at the mill. I remember as a kid, you were always treating somebody from there, fixing a broken arm or something. Yes, my fees from that mill alone probably put you through medical school. I've been wondering if something couldn't be done about that. The accidents at the mill, I mean. It seems to me that... Well, I doubt if anything can be done about it. There are always accidents, especially in a mill. Men grow careless, something goes wrong with the machinery. Well, I don't know, it doesn't seem right to me. Isn't it part of a doctor's job to do everything he can to prevent accidents and sickness as well as to cure them? Of course, but within reason. You can't close every mill and factory in town. Now, you just concentrate on being a good surgeon and don't worry about anything else. Dr. Randolph, they're waiting for you in the operating room. Thank you. Oh, uh, by the way, tell Martha I'll be dropping in for dinner tonight. in just a moment. Mason, what's the matter with you fellows over there at the plant? I thought I told you to come in and have this hand dressed every day. Johnson's as bad as you are. His wound should be dressed every day, too. Yet he hasn't been in for a week. Ah, you fellows at the plant are all alike. Gosh, Doc, it ain't so easy. We work all day and at night. Well, it seems when we get home, get cleaned up and have our supper, well, I don't know. 
It seems there just ain't no time for running to the doctor. I have an idea. What time do you fellows quit for lunch? About 11.30. Perhaps if you men can't find the time, maybe I can. How would it be if I came over to the plant tomorrow at 11.30? Gee, do you think you could do that, Doc? Gosh, if you can come over to the plant, that'll help things out a lot. All right. Say, Doc, mm -hmm. I want you to kind of take a look at my back. It seems to be hurting all the time. Sure, I'll take a look at it. So, uh, slip your shirt off, will you? There you are, Jim. That ought to pick you up. Okay, Doc. Thanks a lot. Now, well, that's it. Now, let's see. Where does it hurt? Here? Uh, hurt you there, huh? Do you do much lifting, Judd? Most all the time, Doc. <laughs> You'd think I'd be used to it, wouldn't you? How long has your back been hurting you? Well, for several months off and on, but lately it's been hurting most of the time. Well, how about getting transferred to some other kind of job? A job where you wouldn't have to do any lifting? Why, I've had lifting jobs all the time. Well, if you keep on lifting, Judd, the pain in your back's going to get worse. You'll be laid up. Maybe for a long time. Now, my advice is go see your family doctor as soon as you're through work this afternoon. Get him to give you back a thorough examination and see what he advises you to do. Well, all right if you say so, but I thought maybe you could give me something to rub in and take the pain away. That <laughs> wouldn't do any good, Judd. Now, don't put off seeing your doctor. Go see him as soon as you're through work today. Will you? Well, all right if you say so. Got a little cut in my arm, Doc. Did it this morning. As long as you're going to be around here, I thought maybe you'd take a look at it. Mm-hmm. It ain't much. Yep. This morning, eh? Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Did you dress this yourself? Yeah. I see. Sit down here, Bill. Well, you fellas ought to have a first aid kit around here. Yeah, except we wouldn't know how to use it. Well, I'd be glad to teach somebody to give first aid treatment. Come in handy in cases like this. Say, Art. Yeah, Bill? Come on over here. Art's always around helping when anyone's hurt. He'd be a good one to teach first aid to. What's up? Hello, Doc Randall. Hello. Doc here wants to know if you want to be his assistant. <laughs> Bill suggested that you might be interested in learning a little about giving first aid in cases like this. Yeah, that'd be all right. Well, fine. I'll leave some iodine, some bandages, and a few... Uh, Say it. How about putting the stuff in here? I don't use this box anymore. Yes, that'll make quite a medical department. Yes, quite a medical department. One morning, about three weeks later, Dr. Randall Sr. was reading a newspaper. What he saw didn't exactly please him. Say, Ken. <clears throat> oh, hello, Martin. Kenneth, listen to this. Worker threatened suit for alleged back injuries. Decision to sue based on diagnosis of Dr. Kenneth Randall. Well, I hope you realize a thing like that can cost us every good patient we have. I've spent years trying to build up a dignified and successful practice, and then you come along and get yourself mixed up in a thing like this. Son, I wish you hadn't done it. But, Dad, what would you have me do? I suggested he see his own doctor and take his advice. Anything wrong with that? What I mean is you should have stayed away from the factory in the first place. And, Kenneth, I'm going to seriously suggest that from now on, you do your practicing in this office. Or the hospital surgery. That's your number one responsibility. And stay away from factories. That's not the life for you. Martha, I'll drop in for dinner tonight. Oh, fine. 
Martha, I've always felt that for a man to be a success in his own eyes, he's got to be more than just a competent member of his profession. I don't quite see what you're getting at. Oh, I mean, to be really successful, or maybe I should say worthy, uh, a carpenter, a tool maker, engineer, preacher, or a doctor, should contribute something to the advancement of human progress through his profession. Maybe it's just finding new ways to make something better or cheaper. Maybe it's fighting and working unselfishly for a just cause. Ken, you sound just like a high school valedictorian. <laughs> well, maybe so, but, but I mean it. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm beginning to think that, that my job is doing something for the advancement of of a new kind of medical practice. New? In what way? Well, new from the point of view of a doctor working to cut down sickness and accidents in the towns, factories, and mills. Yes, I... I suppose you could call it the... the practice of industrial medicine. But, Ken, you know what your father will say. What's more important, Martha? What do you say? All that I am, or ever hope to be, I owe to my wife. In that case, I'd better do all I can to help in whatever job you undertake. How are you going to go about it? Well, right now, I don't know. I really don't know. But I'm going to do something. Doctor, Mr. Gregg and I have been talking over the idea of your coming into the plant for a regular period each day. I must say, the idea of a doctor in a factory seems quite unusual to me, to say the least. Sit down, Doctor. No, gentlemen, there's nothing new about a doctor in industry, and I've been interested in the idea for some time. So when you said you wanted to see me, I came right over. <laughs> 